Hello, my name is Low G, and welcome to another edition of the Low G Power Ups. This power up is going to be slightly different than the others in that it's almost exclusively right hand focused with some alternate picking with speed bursts, but we're also going to be doing a little bit of improvising. We're not really going to be improvising with random notes, but we will be improvising within a set structure. So first, let's check out what this exercise sounds like. This power up will be split into parts one, two, and then the final part where we will run the entire thing along with a backing track that gradually increases tempo. Let's get started now with part one. All right, for this part, we're not really gonna talk at all about what the left hand is doing as far as choosing the notes or the improvising element. We're not really gonna do any of that. We're just gonna play one note with the left hand, this B flat right there. That's all we're gonna do for now. Let's just mostly focus on this right hand and what the part actually is. So let me play it a couple times so you can see what it sounds like by itself. Here we go. Okay, so if that part sounds familiar to you, it's a heavily used type of picking pattern that you'll find in the song Bleed by Meshuggah. So if you've never heard that song before, I highly recommend you check it out because it's pretty awesome. So let's go over exactly what my right hand uh, is doing right here. So there are these kind of real quick little speed bursts of down up happening. Right, so if I slow it down, it kind of sounds like this. So down, up, down, up, down, up. That's really the whole pattern, right? Down, up, down, up, down, up, again. Down, up, down, up, down, up, again. Down, up, down, up, down, up. I'll play it again without talking. I'll play it better. Okay, so down, up, down, up, down, up. The first down, up is those two are faster than the rest of the notes. And then once we hit that downstroke, then it's normal like that. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, the interesting thing about this part is when I play it like I'm playing right there, it feels like it's in four, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Let me do that better. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? But that's not what we're doing. We're doing this part without any pausing. So right when we're done with that last upstroke, we start back immediately. So it sounds like this. Right? So what kind of rhythm would that be? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So the part is groups of five, which gives it the kind of odd syncopated feel. So actually, when you're playing this part slow, it's actually a lot harder to, to play it slow than it is fast. Once you speed it up, your hand just kind of flutters and works well. But when you play it slow, you actually kind of have to think about it a little bit. So, But of course, we still have to practice it slow to make sure we're getting all the rhythms correct, et cetera. So let me play it a couple more times by myself just on this B flat right here so you can see what it sounds like. Here we go. All right? Down, up, 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 down, up. So all you need to do is just think about that one repetition and then repeat. If it helps to kind of nod your head at the beginning of every phrase, by all means, do that. If that helps, or just nodding your head in four, if that might feel good. Whatever works for you, but that's generally the part. So now let's transition to a closer kind of zoomed in um, version or zoomed in shot of my hand. So you can see exactly what my pick is doing, because there are a couple little things going on with the pick that will make this a little bit easier. Okay, so first I want to apologize for the current state of my nails. I think you should instead pretend that they look amazing and the video will become more pleasant for you. So let me play the part with the zoomed in view so you can see kind of what the pick is doing. Here we go, let me find my B flat, here we go. So there's a couple of little things that I think are really important. Of course, you don't have to do any of this stuff, but I think it will help or it definitely helps me whenever I'm playing this part. And it has to do with the pick angle. And there's two angles actually going on here. So here's just the pick sitting on the string normally like this. 
Okay. That is not what I'm doing. There are two angles going on. Angle number one is kind of a side to side angle like this. So turning it with my fingers, almost like I have a key in my hand, turning it like that. And then angle number two is actually a tilt downward like that. So both of those different tilts do different things. The first one is more for comfort and kind of speed, I guess, because if we put the pick, if I put my pick flat on the string like this and start picking like that, what happens is the string looks at the pick. It feels the pick like a wall that it has to cross over, right? Because my pick is flat, right? The string hits the pick and then it has to slowly make its way to the bottom and then release. But if I have the pick tilted, the string sees the pick as more of a hill rather than a wall and it can slide off a little bit easier. That's why most people or many people at least like to tilt their pick. Some people will tilt it forwards like this. That's usually how I do it. But other people like to tilt it backwards like this. It's the same idea picking with a tilt, but it's just reverse. So it depends on what's comfortable for you. I've seen people do it both ways um, with great success either way. The other uh, tilt has more to do with the tone. So instead of picking like this, here's the flat pick, right? Instead of just picking like this, which sounds like this, which is fine. If I tilt the pick though, I get a little bit more of a harder attack. Check it out. You can hear that it sounds a little bit more metallic, and that's because when I pick straight up side to side like that, the string is essentially vibrating like this. But if I pick down like this, kind of into the body, the string now vibrates this way for its split second in the beginning and actually smacks against the frets right here. That gives you that metallic sound. Notice when I pick like this, you don't really get it. But like that, you definitely get it because I'm coming down hitting the string and the string will bounce against the fret and come off. And that gives it that extra aggressive attack. It's a technique that's used in many, many genres. I mean, it's common in metal for people to do that kind of heavy palm muting, but it's also common in blues. If you want to really like dig into a note, people will do that kind of thing. Sorry, I'm not playing very well right now because my hand is in a weird position, but my left hand, I mean. So that that's a technique that you can use for a lot of different things to really kind of get a dig more into the string for that extra hard, aggressive attack. A lot of people do it on acoustic as well. They kind of just let their wrists fall into the string like this and the pick will hit it on the way back. So it's almost like I'm like punching the strings a little bit. Let me go back to my B flat here. So notice the angle of the pick. I'm coming way up here, coming way down like that, pushing the string into the body, giving it that extra hard attack. So again, two different angles. Here's the normal pick just flat on the string. That would sound like this, which is fine. But if I tilt it this way, it's going to slide off the string a little bit easier. Right, a little bit more comfortable. It doesn't feel like it's catching on the string. And then if I tilt this pick down and tilt it sideways, I get this kind of extra hard attack with it still feeling smooth and comfortable. Okay, so this track that we're about to play over runs from 60 BPM to 110. Um, keep in mind all of the things we talked about in regards to the exact pattern. Keep in mind the pick angles. Of course, you can try the pick angles if you want. If they end up not working out for you, then that's totally cool, but I still think you should give it a try, see if it helps. And what we're gonna be playing over this track is just one note. We're gonna play B flat, that's it. So B flat right here, if you wanna play this B flat, Go ahead if you want to play this one, whichever B flat you want to play. And in fact, what I'm going to be doing over this track is playing all of the B flats around the guitar. You don't have to do that. You can just sit on one B flat or maybe sit on a couple. I'm just kind of moving around just to have some fun. So if you want to do that as well, kind of test out your note knowledge, by all means do that. But make sure that the right hand is still the priority. If you're moving around and you're starting to mess up with your right hand, stop moving around and just sit on this one note or sit on maybe two notes or something. So you'll hear me do something like this a lot. like that. So just jumping around, just doing random things. So don't really pay attention to me. Just think about the tempo, think about the time of the track and make sure that you're locking on that to that B flat and continuing that pattern over and over again. So anyway, let's get on to that track. Thank you. 
right, that does it for part one. I hope your picking hand is feeling loose and dexterous. As usual, if you enjoyed this type of instructional material, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below, and I'll see you guys in part two.